I know you didn't ask, but here are some of my favorite death metal albums of all time, specifically my top five, which was super hard to narrow down because there's so many amazing death metal albums out there. But uh, yeah, well, why would you care? Well, I'll give you a couple reasons. One um, is that maybe you're interested in some new music suggestions, something you never heard of before, some album you've never heard of, or something like that. Not that any of this music is new, in fact, far from it, but you know, there's still a good chance you could be discovering it for the first time based on my recommendations, or perhaps prompting you to revisit it, breaking out a classic old album you haven't listened to in a long time that maybe you, you used to love. Which brings me to point number two of maybe why you'll care about this video, and that's that maybe you're just a huge 90s death metal fan like me, and you just love talking about this stuff like me. So this video is for, primarily, for people like you, you know, that just love talking about this stuff because I could go on and on, and I'll try not to, but we'll see what happens. Third reason may be that, um, you know, you're just interested in hearing about some of the music that had such an incredible influence on my music, riffs, solos, songwriting, everything. Kamira for sure, we're all big death metal fans. Um, so anyways, if you wanna hear what helped create maybe the music that you like from me, here we go, in no particular order. We'll start with this one here, Deicides, Once Upon the Cross. One of my favorite albums ever, ever, you know, beyond death metal, just one of my favorite albums ever. The songwriting, just so killer. And if you're a fan of death metal, how they incorporate death metal and songwriting together is phenomenal. There's typical songwriting formulas with verses and choruses, bridges, all that, intros, outros, all that. The grooves are insane. The musicianship is insane. So here we go with a 1995 classic from Deicide. I'm not sure what album this is for. Maybe their third or something. Um, but um, another Scott Burns masterpiece from Mora Sound, where all that great death metal stuff was coming out of Florida around this time there in Tampa. Mastered by George Marino. We saw this, Kamira as a young band, and so we were like, we gotta get something mastered by George Marino. I wanna say maybe it was the self-titled we had him do a test master on for like Nothing Remains. We, we sent out Nothing Remains um, to like a bunch of mastering guys to see which we liked best, which was a suggestion from Roadrunner. They wanted us to do that, but we were stoked on that because I think we had heard, you know, George had done albums like this, and I think he was Metallica's guy for a while. Anyways, Ted Jensen ended up getting the job, Pantera's guy, so we we're equally stoked on that. Again, I'm talking about Kamira's self-titled and I think we went with Ted, um, you know, thereafter until maybe like uh, The Infection, which I think Zeus did. Anyways, I digress. But um, dude, Glenn, the Hoffman brothers, Steve, Steve's drumming. Dude, this is crazy. Look at this picture. I mean, as a kid, this happens to me all the time with albums. Tell me if you agree or not. But like, I look at this and I think when I was a kid, I was like, man, those guys, you know, they're like my dad's age or something like that. But really, these guys are in their 20s here. It's crazy just how, uh, you know, just sinister and menister, menacing that they look. I'm gonna try to name my favorite cut from every album too, or just every album, um, and or just leave some suggestions. But I gotta say with this one, the opening track and title, title track, Once Upon the Cross, just opens with a fury. You hear that and you know you're in for something. It's so incredible. Andals used to love this album too. And um, we jammed this stuff long before Camaro. We jam all these songs. He'd always try to get me to get that feel and once upon the cross. I can never quite catch on to that because it's in like, I don't even know, three, four or something like that. Andals knows all about that stuff. So I learned a lot about that kind of stuff from him, and I would always try to impress Steve's cymbal work onto Andals. I'd always want those cymbal accents all over the place. A great example is Trick or Betrayed, one of my other favorite cuts from this album, number five here. The solo section, go back and revisit that, and listen to Steve's cymbal accents during the solo, and just the solo itself is wicked, the riffing, so incredible. When Satan rules his world, Check this out real quick. Andal's when we were growing up, he lived maybe like five minutes from me. And in his neighborhood, there was a, a local show happening just like a, a street over in some girl's basement. And it was like all these metal bands and death metal bands and stuff and all the fans packed into this tiny basement. Uh, and Ascension, Matt DeVries and Jason Hagar from Camara's band was playing that. And this is before I knew those guys, but we loved Ascension. And so 
me, Annals, and all our buddies were like, we got to go to the show. So we went, we're all crammed into this basement and like parts of the basement are closed off, you know, to try to keep people contained to this one area. But during Ascension set, these guys were, were pitting and blasted through this door. Like the door didn't open like this. It opened like this, like in a movie or something like that, just totally off its hinges onto its back and everybody piled through this door. And it was like, Chris Wood or Hagar from Ascension or something got on the mic and they're like, open the door to Holy Horror. And me and my buddies are like, no way! There are other Deicide fans on Earth? So, no, it was, it was killer. But to know that those guys were Deicide fans too, and this album just specifically, I, I, I revisited it before this and it's, it's just as good as I remembered. I've, I've played this thing thousands and thousands of times. For the record, I'm not any Satanist or anything like that. I grew up as a Catholic kid or whatever, but I still love this stuff because I don't take the lyrics seriously. I didn't care what he was talking about. I just cared that they sounded amazing. Same with like Cannibal or Dying Fetus, whatever. I don't really care what they're talking about, whether it's the gore or violence or, you know, Satanism, stuff like that. I just want it to sound cool. So I don't take it seriously, you know? And now knowing a bunch of those guys, they're all great guys that were just doing it for, for the music, you know? So anyways, Super cool, fantastic album. The one before this, Legion. Ugh. One after this, I think, Serpents of the Light. Also awesome. I started getting weird ass recordings though after this. But, anyways, we'll move on to another one. Oh, another one that I'm so excited to talk about here. <sighs> domination. Morbid Angels Domination. Another absolute masterpiece. Did I mention before that I think that's going to be the theme of this? Um, where every single one of these albums is a masterpiece. There isn't a bad song on any of the albums I'm going to talk about, in my opinion. Every single one, absolutely killer. Everybody knows where the slime lives. I got an awesome cover of Dominate coming out on the Wretched Pain album I've been talking about uh, coming up here. Melting. My favorite, though, my all-time favorite song from this album, Caesar's Palace. Such a sound to it, such a groove. Check that one out for sure. Me and my buddies, oh, dude, me and my one buddy, Ron, who we loved this stuff together. We'd sit in like gym class and just sing Morbid Angel lyrics and talk about it and like and Six Feet Under and Cannibal and stuff like that. And um, he would always get these albums first. Like my parents wouldn't let me and stuff, but he could get whatever he wanted. So that's how I'd check them out, you know, and then I'd eventually get them somehow. But uh, man, this album, start to finish, again, just songwriting, incredible musicianship, incredible drumming, incredible guitar playing, the vocals, just all the lyrics, everything. Total monster. Let's see, I can see where this one was produced. Uh, uh, I can't tell. Giant Records though, I've never paid attention to that. I've never even heard of that, Giant Records. So yeah, Domination. Check out Caesar's Palace if you're not familiar, dude. It's got closure. So much, so many Kamira riffs and, and just songwriting like ideas come from this album. And from me, Caesar's Palace, especially. Let's keep it with more of an angel and go to Covenant. Oh my God. If you know, you know. Again, the musicianship, the grooves, Rapture, Pain Divine, maybe my favorite tune, like blood of my hands or the lion's den in there or uh, I've, I've talked about this recently in one of my videos sworn to the black dun, 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 dun. so many killer parts such a huge influence god of emptiness from beavis and butthead put this album on the map bow to me faithfully um what's the other one uh angel of disease i always thought was awesome too it sounded like i i've still it sounds like a different singer, not David Vincent. Like it was the rumor amongst me and my buddies that it was Trey singing that song. I actually have no idea. Chime in if you know who sings Sworn to, uh, I'm sorry, Angel of Disease, but that didn't, 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 didn't. Angel of Disease, one who shuns the light. Wow, didn't shun the Gulroth. Goats with 1,000 yards. And the solo that popped, dude. Oh my God. I hope you can tell how excited I am about this. And again, this message for anyone who wants to listen, who wants to share in the excitement of some killer albums that had such an impact on me growing up that I'm still this excited now, 44 years old, talking about them all these years later. Produced by Morbid Angel and Fleming Ra Rasmussen. Why does that name sound familiar? It's not the Metallica guy, is it? 
No, it's, it's engineered by Tom Morris and Fleming Rasmussen at Morris Sound. So another Morris Sound classic here. Mixed, ooh, mixed by Fleming at Sweet Silence Studios, Copenhagen, Denmark. So maybe, I, I just associate the name Fleming with like Master of Puppets and yeah, maybe more Metallica records. They, they, I know they went to uh, to Denmark, maybe even for Ride the Lightning. Uh, all this is foggy for me right now. I'm sure you guys will let me know, but I'm kind of putting two and two together. Pete Commando Sandable. Dude, one time, Kamira got the opportunity to play with Morbid Angel on a few shows, and I got to sit on Pete's drum riser during the set. We were over in like Holland or something like that, and I sat on his drum riser. So not only am I like his floor toms right here, you know, as I'm sitting on his drum riser, but I could feel everything because we're on the riser with his throne and everything. So, dude, the kicks were just flawless all night, as you expect. Every every tom fill, absolutely flawless. Never slowed down, never tired. You know, playing songs like Where the Slime Live, where it's just double bass for five, six minutes or something straight. The whole set's like that. What a record. Yeah, dude. Morbid Angels, Covenant. A lot of my buddies are into their earlier stuff, Altars of Madness, Blessed are the Sick, which are, are cool records too, but I got into them like in the Covenant, Covenant. Well, I got into them on Domination, that's how I, was, I discovered them, and then I went back and got Covenant, um, and it's just mind-blowing. And then Vincent left the band, and uh, Steve Tucker took over, and a lot of those albums are cool too. I like that latest one, uh, especially, what's that called again? Um, uh, I can't think of it right now. I'm going to pop it on the screen real quick, though. I know it's got a song called, like, Piles of Little Arms or something like that, but I think that's a cool one. And then there, all, we all know that one that was a super weird one that came out, like, a couple years before, or, I don't know, eight, seven, eight years ago now, and then they did that uh, that um, Hitler spoof on YouTube where Hitler, like, gets the new Morbid Angel record, and he's so excited about it, but then, like, you know, he's so disappointed because it's terrible. If you guys haven't seen that, it's killer. Maybe I'll link that below um, so you can see... Um, this this like spoof on Hitler reacting to a bad Morbid Angel record. It's insane. Uh, here we go. I talked about this in one of my latest as my second favorite record of all time behind End Justice for All, Cannibal Corpse's The Bleeding. Again, such a masterpiece. Every single tune. This was kind of like my real introduction to Cannibal Corpse. I had um, I had heard Tomb of the Mutilated before, before this, and uh, kind of got into that. Um, and then, you know, Ace Ventura came out and we were like, whoa, you know, we know, we, we've seen this, we've heard of this band. Um, but it was like, it was the bleeding that my friend Ron that I mentioned before got, and we just started listening to this like in his room every day and like, oh my God, was, I was absolutely obsessed. I is st I'm still obsessed with this album. Favorite tune? Gotta be the bleeding title track, an experiment, homicide, ugh, pulverized. Again, my songwriting, riffing, stuff like that. Not that my riffs sound like this or whatever, but it just, you know, bled, the bleeding, bled into my playing, and like that's what I wanted to, to try to make. Um, and of course, those guys have their own style, and my style showed through in its own way, kind of in a lighter way. You know, I could never go full, full death metal like this because I had just like too much Pantera in me, too much Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer in, in my riffs that it kind of pulled it away from being just straight, um, you know, just death metal riffing constantly and stuff like that. But the fact that that influence exists there, I know is a key element to why people like Kamira's sound because you can hear that death metal in it. And we got stuff like this to, to, um, to thank staring through the eyes of the dead another beavis and butthead one where you where you see it on there and you just you get this connection with beavis and butthead like like oh yes mike judge knows this stuff too and like he must be a metal fan too creator of beavis and butthead mike judge obviously their biggest tune strip rape and strangled on here you know kind of i i i I'd, i'm gonna go on a whim and say i think that's probably their most popular song to date we talked about she was asking for it in that last video. Just some of the breakdowns on here, the pulverized breakdown. Force fed broken glass, so killer. And then I remember, I haven't seen this in so in decades, but there's a picture of Barnes in here. But before I knew Barnes, you know, where I was like, dude, that guy, he looks just so terrifying. 
in a sick way, right here. You see that picture? Just something about him, I don't know what. But I was like, oh man, it, that just picture just matches his voice and he just sound, it, he just was, was awesome, he was a god. And different artwork too, from what we had seen. We had seen like Eaten Back to Life, Butchered, and Tomb. And this one didn't have, it, it's just kind of a different theme, you know? Still a Vincent Locke masterpiece. I loved Vincent Locke because of uh, all the artwork he's done for these guys. I tried to hit him up one time to get him to do a piece of artwork for me. And he had no idea who it was, anything like that. Not that it would matter, but he blew me off. I was bummed about that. But all these guys, you know, Mazurkowitz, Webster, Barrett, uh, and, and uh, Jack Owen, incredible. Pat O'Brien, he was the guy before this record and before, right? I think Barrett came in to this record or joined the band on this record. I think if my memory serves me correctly. Another Scott Burns masterpiece at Mora Sound. Six Feet Under just put out that uh, that new single, which is sick. But I, and, and, but what I actually saw first was Jack Owen doing a, a cover of it or like a playthrough of the song. I can't remember what it's called right now. But um, so I just checked out Jack's channel. He's got some gold gold mine footage on his YouTube page of Corpse in the studio recording the bleeding at Morris Sound and they're working on that that breakdown and she was asking for it like you got to check this out it, and like it's pure gold and when you read the comments there are so many comments that say this is gold this is pure gold because yeah just to be able to see these guys and then I stumbled upon like Sepultura making a rise at Morris Sound so man thank God for YouTube right yes sir the bleeding can't say enough about it. So killer, which leads to the last one on my list. Now I also have a bonus uh, that we're gonna get into, but the last one on the list, the next album from Chris Barnes, Haunted. Also in my top five favorite albums of all time. So many of you know, but for those that don't know, I believe I believe this is a story that uh, from, what, from what I've heard that um, you know, Barnes had started his a side project, Six Feet Under, at his tail end of his career with, with Cannibal. Um, so after, you know, he parted ways with Cannibal, for whatever reasons, he already had a band ready to go, Six Feet that he was working on and stuff, and Haunted came out. Um, and my buddy Ron I was talking about, well, first, another buddy of mine got a sampler, and it had, like, it had lycanthropy on it. Do -do -do -do. And we're like, what is this? We realize it's Chris Barnes. Oh my God, he's got a new band. You know, we're like, you know, 15 years old at the time. There's no internet or anything like that. So you got to find out about this stuff just through word of mouth and magazines and stuff like that. But we're like, whoa, what is this? Then, then if anybody could have that sampler, I tried or could find that sampler. Let me know what it was called, or whatever. I tried looking it up and I couldn't find it. But there's a couple other tunes on there that I know that would help identify it. It had, it had a new song from Grip Inc., which was Dave Lombardo's thing at the time after he had left Slayer. I wanna say maybe there was a pungent stench tune on there. Why can the bodies fly? Um, maybe like uh, uh, like this Judas Priest side side project with like Black Sabbath guys, I forget what it's called. Geezy, Geezer Butler, Gigi Butler, I don't know. Something like that, but it was a cool sampler I'd love to check out again. Anyways, then my buddy Ron gets the Haunted record and we just, Ate this thing alive. Favorite tune, Remains of You. Uh, Alan West, I always thought this was a chick. If you look closely at that picture, I always thought this was a chick. But uh, that's Alan West from Obituary. World Demise, another killer record that, that I loved so much. Um, so it, Because I loved World Demise, hearing that he was in Six Feet with these guys, Terry Butler, Greg Gall, great guys. I went on a tour with these guys with Kamira and then obviously make a record with Barnes and stuff. So, I mean, got to meet Alan West when we were on tour, when I was on tour with Six Feet Under and stuff overseas. Killer, Scott Burns, Mora Sound. And like I've said many times, I was a kid in the front row singing along on Six Feet Under's first tour on Supporting Haunted when they came through Cleveland. They opened with Torn to the Bone. Which I got to play with those guys then when I was playing with Six Feet Under years later. Man, just fairy tale stuff, you know? Great. Barnes is the GOAT. 
treated me like a king the whole time. I'm forever grateful. If you haven't been watching the Spartans, hello. Still love you, man. Uh, uh, so many great ones. Human Target. Check this album out if you're into like slower death metal. There's no blasts, no anything like that. It's just groove after groove. Simple riffs, but absolutely fantastic songwriting. And to be a singer like Barnes is, where it's just the most guttural, I don't even know how to describe his vocal style, but to make you know, chorus, catchy and memorable choruses. I took an ax to your head, chopping rotted flesh. Ugh. It's a genius, absolute genius. So that wraps up the five, but I said I'd do one bonus. Now, when I did like a, a, a few video goes, I've been doing these like ranking videos lately. I know a lot of you are watching, I appreciate that. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already so you can see more of them. And if you are subscribed, you've been along, I appreciate you. But uh, a lot of people would comment in those videos, oh, why aren't you naming Kamira breakdowns? Why aren't you naming Kamira solos? Or, you know, stuff like that. And I'm like, man, I can't name my own music in this stuff. But I've decided I'm gonna break my own rule with one of my favorite death metal albums ever that I'm a part of. Again, thanks to Chris Barnes. Six Feet Under is Undead. Love this album. Favorite tracks, probably 18 Days. I may have mentioned before, when Chris and I you know, started writing together, we did two or three tunes, which ended up on, uh, not on Born, but um, Unburied, I think, which was kind of like just a digital EP release of a lot of the demos that didn't make Undead or Unborn. Um, and it was just one, the only, my only involvement, there's a lot of confusion about this, my only involvement with Unborn, the record after this, is just one tune called Psychosis. And that was an early demo that we did for this, along with a couple other demos that didn't make it. Um, but it was the fourth song that I wrote trying to present material to Barnes as we were establishing our, our working relationship and stuff like that. And it was the song 18 Days, which is my favorite tune from this record. And that's the one where we knew we were onto something. It came out awesome when we we're like, all right. And then, Everything else just started flowing, uh, writing these tunes, got Tally involved, which I was stoked about, you know, and he was stoked when I, when I called him about that because Barnes was like, hey, we need a drummer. And I'm like, what about Kevin Tally? And he's like, do you think he'd do it? I said, I know he'll do it. And he did, and he did a killer job. So I'm so proud of this record, one of my crowning achievements. And not even because of that, like if, even if I wasn't on it, I would love this record. Barnes' vocals are phenomenal. The drumming is phenomenal. I played bass on it. Bass is cool, uh, you know, but proud of my riffs. I wanted to try actually to blend what I could, my main influences from The Bleeding and from Haunted into this record because I had the opportunity to do so. Total rock star moment, you're called upon. From like I said, from a kid in the crowd in the front row singing all these words and stuff to then being able to write for that singer in that band and stuff like that. The way I wanted to try to do it justice was is to take my influences from my favorite material from uh, from Barnes at that time, which is The Bleeding and Haunted, and I did my best. You have to let me know what you think. If you check out this record, or if you're already a fan, then awesome. If you know, you know. So that's gonna do it. I happened to grab another, so I went through my big uh, CD pile, you know, and um, I was looking for some stuff, came across Tomb, obviously, unbelievable record. Oh just about the production of Undead. This is a Jason Sukoff, Mark Lewis worked on this, down at Audio Hammer. Um, I believe Jason Sukoff mixed it. And then uh, Alan Duchess mastered it. Love the sound of this. It's got a dark, dark sound to it. Anyways, uh, and then I mentioned this one in uh, my who wrote these songs, cover songs video recently, this Hammer Smashed Face uh, EP, you know, that has Zero the Hero on it. The Exorcist and Hammer Smashed Face. It was like a Hammer Smashed Face single. So I know some guys have this one, but it's a cool little keepsake. And as I was looking for these CDs, trying to find them to make this video, I happened to come across and figured I'll just show them off. Let you know, yeah, I really do have this stuff, you know, man. So anyways, that's that. If you've made it this far, thanks so much. Make sure, comment below. Let's get the conversation going. Tell me some of your favorite death metal. Tell me some of the ones you agree with with me. Some of your favorite bang banging moments and stuff like that from these albums that um, are just absolute classics. They don't make them like this anymore, in my opinion. You know, and, uh, but everybody's got their own opinion and you're welcome to yours. Cheers, guys. Again, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already. That like button if you like the video. Check out the description below for all the cool things I have to offer my Patreon community where we're doing all sorts of extra stuff. 
my Guitar Instructional DVD, all my playlists of guitar and gear demos and reviews, my Everything You Love show, guitar maintenance tutorials, stuff like that. I got it all. Check it out. And I'll see you soon.